Welcome to another lesson today. We are going to uh, review a game that, honestly, all I remember is I, I remember I did poorly this game. <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, take that review and open up. So it's going to be this Sony game here. Uh, now let's actually click in and just review the team composition, see if we can refresh our memories a little bit here. Um, so it looks like we were up against a Caitlyn that went just absolutely off. Um, and they actually had a perfect game in the bottom lane with their scores. So this is this one's going to be squarely on our shoulders. Um, the question is how we could have played a little. Excuse me, how we could have played a little bit better. And since I don't recall anything about the game, uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna find out together. <laughs> Thank you for joining me on this journey, where we're gonna figure out okay, what could we have done better? Um, now Sona is somebody that. I feel a little bit better on because I just recently swapped out some of the runes. I swapped out my uh, my flat HP seals for mana regen seals. I also did a little tweaking uh, on the quints and marks to optimize them a little bit more. Got myself onto some scaling MR instead of uh, flat MR. And you know, I think I'm feeling feeling like that's generally better. Uh, but I am having a little bit of problem about. Uh, actually making it work in game here, as we see from this example. So I, I'm, I'm about 50-50 with that new rune setup, but I think we could be doing better because I know Stone is pretty strong right now. We're actually still having troubles with getting our draw tool to pop up on screen. Give me one moment here while I try and see if that worked. What if I go like this? Uh, no, it won't let us do it. All right, well, we're still going to have to do the lessons without the draw tool for now. Sorry, guys. We'll we'll get that fixed uh, soon enough. Yeah, so let's go ahead and check out the start here. Stepping a little bit forward here just to get the early trade. That's really nice because it procs three charges of our tribute, which means we get to go back to base and uh, buy ourselves another biscuit. Go ahead and get our passive charged up to uh, as much as we can while we were in base. Should probably be uh, throwing out the cues right now because it's not fully charged. So that's alright. Not that much more of a notable start than I got myself a free pot and still got to do the greedy start with my control ward to help out our mid. And since it's a uh, invade start with Shiv, having that uh, Defensive ward that I lingered to throw down it means we're going to see Hakram if he looks for an invade. Let's actually go and swap over to our camera here. So we're stepping forward, getting a little poke down. That's good so far. There's the Hakram showing up on the ward, so I start playing a little bit more defensively because we're looking to uh, rotate over to him if we see him enter the lane. We don't, so we just go back to focusing on our lane here. Fortunately, Renekton got a nice all-in onto Shen there at level 3. Good sidestep there on the hook. Going forward, getting our poke. I think that's a good way to do it. I could have uh, maybe gotten the auto off onto Kate there as well. Need to be a little bit more aggressive with comboing the auto into it. That time it took a little bit too much damage. Let's actually review that and see what was different. Because on the previous times, we, we were able to get away with it without taking too much damage. Maybe it's because we're too far past the like the line of scrimmage for the minions here. And I've got this minion, like, body blocking for me from Thresh. But she just unloads for a trade, so I guess I'm being a little bit too aggressive trading there. And sure, I have regen and I'm maxing W first in this build. So I regen pretty effectively, but... I think this time was just a little bit slow to rotate in, and then I just sort of ran into it. Let's actually review that one too. It was a little slow to get here, because the trade had already started, but so was Thresh. So I come in, open up with the Q. I haven't thrown out the auto yet, so I could have done that a little bit better. And I walked a little bit too close to Thresh, and set him up for an easy flay, which got Kate an extra auto or two. So I could have micro that a little bit better. Should have gone in more defensively along the wall here. Use my minion line to body out Thrush. Now since we got chunked out, we do have to play a little bit more defensive, just heal up. 
looking to wait for the heal until I can get a little extra value healing Lucian as well. I think that was way too far forward. Mm. Let's see the positioning here. So that's an unfortunate trade, but here's where I look for another trade. And I see now I have my passive up, so I want to get the proc onto her with the auto attack. That's just a really good trap for her, because if I step forward, then I have to like walk back through it and get caught. So she just gets a free flash and heal. So that's really too bad. I played that pretty poorly. I think I'm just being too aggressive. Um, especially once I start to get into these later levels. The W Max build is not really one of aggression, it's one of like poke and out sustain. And the poke is more there to just accentuate the fact that we're sustaining through trades. So I think we need to be a little bit more defensive with how often we go into trade with our poke. And just be a little bit more worried about those Caitlyn traps. Now this, I went in fairly aggressively because I was looking to trade here. Because I just got back with full health and I don't want to start healing without value on myself. But this is like way too aggressive. The call for help here is insane because Lucian goes in, but now he's in like a giant call for help with no support from our minions. So this is a really bad uh, trade. And I kind of baited us into it there. And Heck follows up and Thresh flashes as well to get the kill. Good play by the jungler to rotate, seeing that we were out of position there. Yeah, so that was, I think that entire kill actually was my fault. Because sure, Hackerum came and that was good sense by his part, but if I hadn't gone for that really aggressive trade at the start to set things up, and like, walk out of sync with my minions so Thresh could get like a just easy, <laughs> just a free hook onto me. Um, just because I was so aggressively looking to trade, like, that would have gotten much better. And I think we're definitely trading too aggressively in the early game here with Sona. Do you throw the damage reduction auto attack onto this? So we can do that a little bit more safely. And unfortunately, it's a Drake that's not really that important for us, but certainly does help us as Sona, because then we regen even better. And mana gating is our main obstacle with Sona. We've got good coverage of the river right now, from these four wards actually. So we're pretty safe in lane, which allows me to just use the river's retreat path. Waiting for him to throw out the hook so I know I can walk back a little bit more safely. Still a bit of a greedy path, but not that much follow-up. So probably again, I'm, I'm playing overly aggressive. This is something I did actually a number of times today. I would be walking. Let's actually skip back to where the hook is. So I'm walking, and I see the cast, right? And I think it's going to go this way. So I try and juke back. Whereas, it's actually somewhere in the middle of where I was trying to go and where I was already going. So what I wind up doing is just walking back. What well, probably would have put me out of the hitbox if I had just kept walking this way, not even properly juke there, but just kept walking. I either would have been like over here instead when I got hooked after the first like two jerks of it, or I could have just dodged it entirely because I walked out of range of it. And instead of trying to juke, I guarantee the hook and then wind up dying there. So I think. I also need to be a little bit more worried about playing myself with the juke bots. Like, it's correct to try and dodge it if you see something telegraphed, but... I think I'm I think I'm overestimating how much I can dodge, especially since I'm not taking movement speed on Sona. Maybe if I had a champion with movement speed runes, I could juke a little bit more aggressively like that, but... Not without the move speed, so... I need to be a little bit more cautious about how I move to dodge skill shots, and I just need to play the early game far less aggressively. Good hook by Thresh there. That one was probably kind of a similar problem, but can't quite go in there because we have no minions. That call for help is insane. Well, it's not even a call for help because uh, they didn't even need it. 
So I throw down the warrior to try and get vision because we're getting invaded. Good ult here. Fortune of the coin just tags a little bit of thrush on the way out. So we can't get too much more than that. But we are able to fend off the invade. We look for more here. But we are very far behind, so unless we can find a really sick engage, we probably shouldn't. And I don't bring a lot of utility to the team outside of my ultimate, which I already burned, so I think it's right to play cautiously through there. Actually, a little breakup of the call there with me and Lucian. Lucian went in because the minions were down. So as soon as he dashed, I should have been moving in a lot more aggressively. And I kind of reacted pretty quick, but I still think I could have reacted a little bit better. And I could have proactively chosen a path that way too. But my problem this game so far has been being overly aggressive. And now that we're behind, I have to carry that out into mid-game even now that I have my ultimate. So... I think this is just me doing a little last hitting. I actually decided to back to try and Pair my back with Lucian a little bit better because I have decent item breaks at the time. If I recall, yeah, I was able to I think finish off Sightstone and pick up boots, something like that. So I was on the map for a pretty long time there. So we're back in lane, just doing our farm thing. Trying to get some more coverage so we can get this Drake. This is a much more important Drake than the first one. And we do have three people here, but I actually, I remember this one. I'm with my ultimate because I saw that uh, Hakram was looking to contest. And I thought we were going to have enough damage to burst this out. So I just try and ult him. But he's got Ghost, so he's able to juke it out on me. So good play by him. And the fear, I think, was enough to stop Shivana there. Good ulti by Shen. But, you know, we're, we're already dead at that point. It's a little too late for uh, that to make that much of a difference. So unfortunately, we lose the Drake there. Maybe it was too aggressive. For me to back Shivana up just because we're so far behind. And instead I should have called for Shivana to back off the turret entirely. Or back off the Drake entirely. Because we didn't have the best control of the side lane going into that. So I think that's a missed macro play. And there again I kind of self juke into a hook there. Um, Got to be a little bit more careful with like out thinking myself. And just play by the numbers, you know. If I... And moving away from the hook, away from where it should have been, like, theoretically cast and creating as much distance as possible, great. Just keep doing that. Overplaying it a little bit. I think I'm mind gaming myself. Skip ahead here to where Lucian shows up. Pop over here to look for a play mid because I do have my ultimate available. And then I see that the fight's breaking out. Actually, I think I was originally rotating because I saw a fight was about to break out. Couldn't get there in time. And I don't have my E, that is one of the downsides to neglecting your E until level 9. It makes your map rotations a lot slower. Good sidestep there. Um, so I haven't been able to affect the map that much compared to somebody who would max E, or get E at least, before 9. We're pretty far behind here, so we do have to just look for something a little bit more defensive. I think after I saw that the Rift Herald was being channeled, I probably should have hung back here with Talon. Because now I don't have a way to get in here. And Shivana kind of walks with me. And that again sort of baits my teammate into taking a really, like, not optimal path. And like, she's already chunked out so hard by the start of this that she just straight dies. And like, nobody bodied for her, which is really unfortunate, but... So again, I think, and then Jod's just a good hook by Thrush. Um, I think the first kill on the Shivana there was actually my fault because like I was standing over here and it like baited her to taking this greedy like path and she took a whole bunch of damage. So I think my pathing is impacting my teammates and I'm being like overly confident with my pathing. That was poor map awareness because I thought that Shivana was still behind me. She was actually fighting Fizz up here. So that's just poor map awareness. And like they're able to immediately punish any like error like that this game because we're so far behind. 
So map awareness always a thing. Having the larger minimap does help us quite a bit with that. Uh, but we still make errors. Still working on that. But I think the main problem so far has been over aggression. And not just at the start of the game, but also in that mid game where I've sort of taken aggressive paths and baited my teammates into joining me. I think that's another similar thing. Sure, I got away with that, but it cost our team a lot. And it even cost me my flash to get away with that. So that was a really overly aggressive path. But it's nice to see that I'm solidly on one side this time. If I'm just being flat overly aggressive, then we, we know how to fix that. We just don't be nearly as aggressive. Trying to keep them off our nexus by baiting them on the meat. They actually are able to burst me down because they have such a lead that they can fountain kill me. And I don't think that's the end of the game, just judging from the timeline. So somebody must be the hero here. Or they just backed off. Yeah, they just didn't commit nearly hard enough. So I gave us a little bit of time, but I'm not sure much happened here. So we're just going to keep it on hyper speed here. We're actually going to up it to four times because I'm not sure much happens here. Well, uh, maybe we could have done with Talon there, but I don't know that we could make that work. You never know if we're going to try, I suppose. Do try and make the play there, and I think that might actually be the end of it. If I was going to go in and try and make a play like that, I should have done it when Talon went in. And not afterwards when Shivana went in. Shivana at that point is too late. So that's again my bad. Being overly aggressive. And that, that time I think it was the old school problem of overcompensating. Yeah, she got us. Darn. Kate's just so fed. I remember she, she life stole up through like my ignite even. So. At that point it's just out of our control, but the reason it got out of our control is because a really sloppy, overly aggressive play. And that was actually really straightforward. I feel like that lesson was very short, but um, I mean, that's good, right? It's very clear. It's clear what we're doing wrong. We're being overly aggressive. We're being overly aggressive at the very start of the game when we're trying to go for a poke. we got to remember, again, as a Soma that's maxing W first and not Q, Q is less of a tool to, let me just go ahead and take these out. Q is less of a tool to chunk them down and be aggressive, like kind of a brand Zyra style. And it's more of a way to say, hey, when we're trading, not only am I sustaining us through it, but I'm also chunking you guys fairly sizably. Um, since I'm not maxing it first, it's not as sizable, so we're not trading as insanely. So I need to play a little bit more defensive style. I need to let you guys engage us, rely on our minions for the call for help to make the difference. And my Q on top of that will snowball us into a positive trade, which will all then accentuate with my W to heal up and sustain before the next trade can occur. I think that's the way to play the lane. And going for aggressive like poke on Q, if I can keep getting that free harass, sure, definitely take free harass. But there were a couple times I walked beyond the line of scrimmage that the two minion waves form. And I think walking beyond the line of scrimmage is the like point where I'm becoming far too aggressive. If I can walk even up to the line of scrimmage, maybe okay we can get away with that because we have quite a big range on our queue. Um, but like we don't, we, we probably shouldn't do anything beyond the line of scrimmage. Um, especially when there's somebody like a Thresh who can like provide a form of suppression and displacement and bring us even further out of position. And I think we got really punished for that. And in the mid game as well, we again pathed pretty aggressively and our teammates matched that. And while we maybe could have backed it up for ourselves and in some of the situations survived, like we need to stop. This is something we actually reviewed in a previous lesson. We need to stop playing as if like, okay, what can I get away with? And I believe the last lesson we talked about this on was our Janna lesson. And it's because we're really comfortable on Janna, so we know how we can greet out that extra little bit of value with our pathing and like bait people into engaging into something we know we can get away from just to waste their time. But if my teammates see that and they get baited into like thinking there's an engagement happening because they also think I can't get away, that's bad. And similarly, if I think I can greedily path that way for whatever reason, but there's teammates around me, so they join me, and they can't actually get away with it like I can. That's bad, and that's my fault because it's my pathing that's making them think, hey, if Sona thinks it's safe, then I'm going to stick with Sona. And, like, 
That is team play. That is good on their part. What's bad on my part is saying, I, I can get away with this. I'm not playing with the team. Can my team get away with me pathing like that? That is the thought process I need to start taking in. And less of, can I get away with this? More of, can my team get away with this? So again, the greedy pathing is a form of overaggression, though. So I think overaggression in those two situations. And then once we were so far behind, like, we, were, we didn't adapt to playing very well as if we were behind. And once we're at that point, it's really hard to adapt effectively. They have to give us very big, like, windows of opportunity to actually start to catch back up. And they just didn't. They cleaned it. They did a very pretty clean, like, close out of that game. Um, and we tried to throw ourselves at the wall a couple times and couldn't quite make it work. Also, we did miss an ult in there. Also, we had poor map awareness one time. But I think the highlight of this, the main point is definitely being over aggressive. So in our future games, when we get into some Sony games, I think we need to play a little bit less aggressively. Keep in mind that we are the sustain champion. We're running our sustain runes so we can continue to like basically have unlimited health. So let's just chill. Let's max our healing. Let's just constantly sustain through the hell of lane, whatever's happening, and we'll be okay. But we just can't let ourselves put ourselves in an aggressive stance that we can't necessarily back up in that immediate instance because we are about the sustain. We are not about the all-in. We're not a burst champion. Um, even our offense, it's not burst offense, it's poke. So we're not, we're not, we need to play more, I guess like, not necessarily passively, but we need to play with a little less insane aggression. <laughs> um, so we'll hopefully look to employ that a little bit forward. I hope this was helpful to you. I know Sona is becoming like the big support that people are playing now. So if you know somebody who plays Sona a little bit too aggressively, let them uh, send this video the, their way. Hopefully they can learn a little bit by watching me make some mistakes playing a little bit overly aggressive. And if you were that person that uh, played someone a little aggressively and learned something here, well, good. I'm glad we could help you out. Um, thank you for watching the video. Hopefully uh, all these lessons are helpful to you, and hopefully we continue to make some relevant lessons to you in the future. Um, and that's it for today. We'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks for hanging out.